I mean, one bull is great, but isn't everything better in pairs? Hey Wizards, welcome back. Now, I've been pretty excited about this video because I've been curious for a little bit now as to which one of these pistols is just the best of the best at what they do. After reviewing a good bit of bull pistols, I've really come to fall in love with the aluminum style of the 2011s. They just, they just really, really resonate with me. But what I've never done is actually shot them, you know, side by side, doing back-to-back -back drills to see which one of these guys really comes out on top. So today we'll be putting the Bull Armory 2023 Aluminum Frame SAS2 head-to-head -head versus the 2024 EDC to see who gets the crown as the best overall pick. Now, just to remove some confusion, Bull did a naming convention change, so all the previous Aluminum Frame SAS2 models from last year are now just called the EDC. So the 2024 EDC is just the next year's model of the aluminum frame SAS2 from last year. So the naming conventions are different, but we're really just comparing, you know, the 2023 versus the 2024. And I've also done full reviews on both of these pistols. I'll put a link up here and a link down the description to both of those if you want a deeper dive into both of these pistols to learn more about them. Now, bull pistols are notoriously hard to buy, and kind of the whole purpose of this video is to find out if maybe people missed out in not being able to get the 2023 version anymore, or if the 2024 version is just more refined and the better overall buy. And that's kind of what I want to do some testing on and find out for you today. But before we get into it, let's take a moment, thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Fatboy Tripods. In a world where you don't get to pick your terrain, the Fatboy tripods offer you a solution for precision accuracy in any environment. With the inverted legs of the Elevate, you can loosen and lift to set your height on any position, with the Levitate head giving you a tension adjustment with the flick of a wrist to set you up for that perfect shot. Fatboy tripods are just mastering accuracy literally anywhere. The Fatboy stuff is what I use for all my camera setups and I've used them out on the range and they've taken an absolute beating. So if you're looking to get some new tripods, make sure to use discount code TLDCO, save yourself a few bucks. The Fatboy people are just fantastic and I love them for supporting the channel so much. Now for the next piece, we have to get into some of my biases. I have to say that I'm probably pretty biased when it comes to bull because I found they're just, they're just really great people. Great people making great slide. products that <laughs> just aren't looking to screw you over, uh, which is oddly so rare. But I am comparing two of their pistols, so I have to say something negative, and somebody has to be the loser. But I'll still caveat that and say, don't take anything I say or any other YouTuber says as gospel. I say it every single time. But you need to do your own research so you can be the most educated consumer possible. Now, though, let's just get into it. The uh, bull... 2023 EDC, let's just call it that, was the first one I ever shot from Bull. Like this is the first pistol I ever reviewed and it really just won over my heart and I absolutely synced with this pistol from, from day one, from shot one. And I went and Cerakoted it and everything thinking this was my pistol. It was designed for me. I connected with this pistol so much that I was convinced this was just the one. This was the one pistol that's just gonna be forever at my side and everything else will just be, you know, it's somebody else's gun, but this one, this one was mine. If you're curious, Bull really does hate that I share code this, by the way. But I've also been training with the all new 2024 EDC and, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm really curious how all this is gonna go. Now though, I did, pick up the 2023 after training with the 2024 for a little bit. And I mean, I had this, I had this absolutely great performance when I started. Just, wow, wow, doing fantastic there, buddy. 
I gotta knock some dust off when it comes to the 2023 EDC for sure, but I'm sure that'll happen some as we run through some more drills. Now though, let's take a look at both pistols before we go through all the drills and go through all the similarities first, and then I'll show you all the unique differences. Here we have both our 2023 and 2024 EDCs with our Cerakoted multicam slide on the 2023 and the unmolested black on the 2024. Now I know Bull watches these videos and they're probably wondering, is the winner of this contest going to get a multicam Cerakote? And <laughs> probably. Now I tried to make these setups as similar as possible with the lights and optic, and we have the Surefire X300 Turbo and X300 Ultra, which gives us a similar profile and weight. Now the 2024 does have the Emissary Development toggle switch on it. The switch I'm really having to learn because I'm really trying to focus on a lot more of a thumbs forward grip on that support hand to really lock things up. I looked at some shooting footage and I could tell that I'm actually getting better recoil control with that better wrist position with the thumbs forward, but I'm also activating the damn light every time I do that too. So that's something I'm having to work through. So yeah, same-ish lights. Now I also tried to use similar optics. Both are the Hollow Sun 507C, but the 2023 EDC has the ACSS Vulcan, while the 2024 has the standard circle dot reticle. Interesting note, I found the ACSS Vulcan was faster to actually get on target, but the circle dot was a lot easier to track when doing rapid shots. It was just kind of unexpected that I noticed something that small when shooting them side by side with just different optic designs, but it's just a data point I wanted to share with you. Now with both of them side by side, we see both are 2011 style, obviously, both with cuts built into the top of the slide, along with both having stainless steel bull barrels. Both are chambered in nine millimeter and both use the same lightweight aluminum frame. We see the same amazing trigger that just punches way outside its weight class, along with the same hammer from their competition line, along with the same ambidextrous safety. We also see the same grip safety, even if it's in different colors, and we'll get to that. Along with the same S-tier grip design across both pistols. I'm glad nothing changed when it came to the actual grip design because it's just absolutely perfect and it's hard to see in footage without actually handling one of these, but the grip itself is about like eight to 10% smaller than other 2011s, which makes weapon manipulation just, just a absolute ton easier. I mean, as a lefty anyway, it really does seem like 2011s are just better suited for lefties. So yeah, I'll take that as a win. The magwell is also the same design on both to make reloads easy from all sorts of stupid angles. I mean, you saw me bumble jam things at the start of the video and it still worked out just fine. But really at the core, the 2023 and 2024 are very, very similar with the same grip module, the same frame and the same controls. But the question really is, does the 2024 have those small upgrades to just hone that edge to make it a little bit crazier? That's the piece I really wanna know, so let's dive into all the upgrades and changes next. Starting with optics, instead of the old plate system, we see an upgrade into the BAO optic system that allows for multiple optic footprints while also allowing the whole setup to be smaller and more streamlined. The front optic on the 2024 is now fiber optic, but if you do the pro ported version, you'll have the same front blacked out sights. The slide serrations on the 2024 have also been upgraded to give you deeper grooves and a better overall grip on the slide and probably a little bit cooler of a look too. The optic system height also means you have a larger surface area on the rear serrations also. Moving to the barrel, we see the 2024 now sits flush with the end of the slide and is now crowned to add an additional consistency to the platform. Overall, the slide is where you see most of the meat and potatoes of all the changes. The rest is all mostly cosmetic, but still some cool stuff. I will say the 2024 slide is a definite improvement. Just the BAO system itself, just that part is absolutely badass. Being able to swap plates and optics in just a moment is something I've already found to be incredibly beneficial when trying out some different optics. And the new barrel design just looks cleaner to me. The accuracy was always mind blowing when I used it, but the crown barrel is a fantastic addition. So for the slide, I definitely like the 2024 better, 
but do I think those upgrades on the slide are a reason for you to upgrade? Well, I don't know, and I think this, this may be a theme throughout the video. Like, I think the 2023 is great, and the upgrades are there on the 2024, but I don't think they're wild enough yet to warrant, like, completely upgrading something you already have. Let's keep going though, and as I said, most of the other updates are cosmetic, but give a great new look with these blacked out grip screws, blacked out grip safety, and a matte finish along the magwell instead of the glossy finish that was there before. Super nice looking, but I've always kind of liked that silver accent styling, so I really kind of give it a tie when it comes to the styling of both the 2023 and 2024. It's mostly a personal preference thing, and I'd be surprised at this price point if styling was the reason that you went ahead and upgraded, <laughs> but hey, you do you, boo. Testing weight, we may see some small differences with different lights and optics, but we have last year's model coming in at 947 grams, or about two pounds, one ounce, and the new 2024 EDC at 919 grams, or roughly two pounds. Now that's just naked weight without a magazine, and it's interesting that the 2024 EDC shaves off a little bit of weight, but actually, I guess it does make a little bit of sense because now the actual barrel's flush, so there is some weight that is removed there. That's all the similarities and differences, though. Let's go and hit the range and see how they do when we fire them side by side, and let's do the first test, which is gonna be the draw to fire comparison. Starting with the 2023, this pistol felt immediately familiar that knife through the air that just brings rounds straight on target. I found I didn't really have to battle with the pistol at all to get the sights locked in, and I started to remember my love for this platform. Swapping over to the 2024 EDC, I had the same great feeling of speed with the aluminum frame, but the whole setup just seemed better, I don't know, balanced. I felt flatter in my shooting, which allowed me to be more consistent and faster in the presentation. Like we saw in the footage, I felt it out on the range too, where the 2024 just felt more consistent to draw on target every time. Was the 2023 bad? No, not at all. It was absolutely fantastic. But there is that slightest edge that I give to the 2024 EDC that is worth noting. All right, let's redo that drill that I botched at the beginning and do some multi-target and some reloads and then back to multi-target and see how they do when I do a little bit more complex stuff. Jumping first into this drill with the 2023 version, I'm still getting super clean reloads and fast transition. It's just awesome and it makes this whole drill just look and feel super easy. Moving to the 2024, I definitely felt like I was getting a better balance with the draw, but I don't feel like I'm mitigating recoil quite as well. The next round, I really focused on my grip and it really cleaned it up, and it felt like the transitions were noticeably faster and easier to make. So once again for this test, I give the slightest edge to the 2024 because it just seemed easier to use even when we're doing more complicated things and yeah, it just seemed more refined. I did also start to think at this point that the recoil of the two different platforms could be coming into play. So next, I did the return to zero test. As a reminder for what our return to zero test is, I'm basically gonna take a shot and then wait for the actual reticle to fall back on target before I take another shot. So then we see more so what the actual weapon system itself is doing to mitigate recoil and not so much what I'm doing. Even going slow enough to watch the dot, the 2023 does a great job to keep you on target and just stay on target. Moving to the second round, it again became apparent to me though, just how much more movement there is in the dot when comparing them side by side. Getting into the 2024 EDC, there was a significant increase in speed. The dot is just dropping right back to center and there is a significant increase in return to zero with this platform. Interestingly, we can actually slow things down and put them side by side and see what I'm talking about with the newer EDC just dropping right back on target faster than the previous year. It's pretty cool to see the actual slow-mo footage that validates what you were feeling out on the range because it's happening in like microseconds. That one pistol really did feel like it was locking on target a lot faster than the other one. All right, though, let's do another one, though, and compare them, and this one we'll do manual of arms. We'll do, like, a one reload one. Now, nothing was really changed between these two pistols when it comes to the frame 
and controls, so it should be absolutely identical. Let's go find out. Last year's model up first, yep, super clean. And this year's model, again, super easy. But what if I pushed the one reload one like as fast as I possibly could? Maybe then, maybe then we'll see a difference. Now, even going as fast as I could, I don't think there's any difference at all in the two. Yeah, so the control side and manual of arms was a tie because it was pretty much exactly the same as we expected. So let's move into the next test. And for this one, let's move into speed. Here, I'm gonna throw everything to the wind, like aiming and grip and everything, just to see which one you could just shoot faster than the other, if, if there is a difference. I mean, it's the same trigger and the same hammer and all that, so it should be exactly the same. Here I loaded up eight on last year's model and I was able to completely bumble my way through that, but I definitely blame myself. I set up the same eight round magazine on the new EDC and managed to bumble my way through that one also. Well, the good news is, good news is I hiccuped on both of them and they can both shoot far faster than I can. Uh, I don't think there's really any difference there. They both shoot great. Speed wise, as long as you can shoot fast, it can shoot faster than you. Trying a second round of six on the 2023, things went nice and clean. I did seem to notice a lot of recoil with the pistol tracking upward. The six round speed test on the 2024 did seem a whole lot cleaner though. Overall, the trigger on both systems felt fantastic. <laughs> Makes the most sense because it's the same trigger from both years. But I think this whole speed test was uh, pretty much a tie because I don't feel like I could shoot one system any faster than the other. They can both go significantly faster than I could pull the trigger and shoot them. Now from draw to speed shooting to everything else we did in between, I think that's all of our tests. Now then, what are my thoughts as to which one is the better offering in the aluminum frame from Bull Armory? From our testing, I found the 2024 EDC test after test just seemed like it was honed to give you a better balanced pistol that is just faster to get on target, faster to return to zero, but still has all the insane speed and manual of arms of last year. Now, I don't think this is really a surprise, but the 2024 EDC is just a refinement and improvement over everything they did last year to just take the whole thing up a level. But we have the key question. Are all those refinements do they justify you upgrading if you had the previous year's model? I'll say probably no, but they are significant enough for me to notice them. And here you can see the stats side by side in our different stat charts if you wanna have more information. So if you have last year's now EDC, you were still smart for purchasing it when you did and it's still just a fantastic buy. But for those folks that are in the market to purchase now, I do recommend you look at the 2024 EDC because I think there are some refinements and some upgrades that just, they just play far better into that whole EDC role. Now though, EDC versus ultralight. Now that would be an interesting one to see, wouldn't it? Maybe just, uh, maybe just stay tuned as I have some secret sauce planned for you with that one soon. If you get me talking, I'm sure I'll spill the beans about all of it, but I hope this video comparing the Bull Armory 2023 and 2024 EDC was useful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our YouTube and Patreon members. You make it possible for us to be able to test all these pistols, take them out to the range and compare them so that we can come back here and tell you which one is worth your money. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what your favorite Bull offering is or your favorite 2011. I wanna hear about that too. And and maybe you can tell me why it's a 2024 EDC. All right, everyone, take care, wash out. And yeah, yeah, I bumbled up right at the end. Usually at the end of this video, I don't have anything useful. It's usually just me whining and complaining. I mean, they were harvesting the field for a moment there, but it seems like they went the other direction. But um, yeah, a little tip I've learned, I'll just add this little bit at the end here. When I was holding the pistol before, Kind of what I was doing is having my thumbs, you know, a little bit relaxed, I guess, um, where I found if I actually pointed my fingers toward the target, this is probably like a known thing for everyone else that shoots pistols. So if you, if you already know this, and this is common knowledge, then, then fantastic. But I was learning it. Putting my thumbs forward did 
two things for me. Number one, it made it so I could actually point at the target with my thumb. So I'm just pointing at it with my thumbs and, and it's like an intuitive shooting kind of thing. But it also puts more um, strength into my wrist. Like it locks my wrist further forward, which means, which seems like it controls recoil a good bit better. So if you're looking to improve your pistol shooting and your recoil control, like you're not gonna mitigate recoil. It's just gonna drop faster on the target. Try a little bit more thumbs forward. Keep your, keep your thumbs as far forward as you possibly can instead of that more relaxed position that I was. I found that worked a little bit better, but your mileage may vary. Other than that, yeah. Uh, I don't think I can say anything on the ultralight. I'm not supposed to. Okay, I gotta go do, oh, I'm gonna do illuminators next. I got a cool laser speed one coming up. And we're gonna be testing some, oh, plate carriers. Yes, I got plate carriers too. I'm finally gonna show you that off. All right, love these pistols though. If, if you can find a 2023 used um, and save some money on that, that's, whoa, that's a fantastic deal. But I really do think that the 2024 is worth, um, worth the price. This thing's crazy. And it's still significantly cheaper than some of the other offerings. So, all right, I'm gonna go, for real. It's a fantastic day out. Go enjoy, everyone. Take care. You gotta go. You guys gotta go.